Beijing has three goals working through the university system. The first is to influence the next generation of American leadership and how our rising crop of leaders perceives China. The second is to send Chinese students to American universities to acquire knowledge and skills, and then take that back to China. The third goal of Chinese operations on college campuses is intelligence, to collect sensitive information in research labs, especially at major research universities like Stanford and Harvard University. University presidents know this, and this is one reason why they're underreporting, misreporting, or keeping the names of foreign donors anonymous. They know what the Chinese are doing. They know why the Chinese give them so much money. They know their institutions are vulnerable to Chinese espionage. So why do they allow it? They're effectively inviting the Chinese to come in and steal American research. The amount of money that members of the Chinese Communist Party donate to universities is way beyond your $50,000 or $100,000 gift that wealthy American parents will donate to grease the admissions wheels for their children. If you donate a million dollars or more, you're not thinking about admissions, you're thinking about influence. You're looking to influence a school to teach what you want to be taught. You're looking to offer research grants that give you insight into what the Americans are studying, that give you access to America's most prestigious universities. Chinese gifts influence how professors teach about China, how they teach about that region, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and others. This shapes how American students perceive China. It's important to remember that Chinese infiltration is a result of American cooperation, a function of American greed. Yes, the Chinese are running hostile operations on American campuses, but we're responsible. We're the ones who welcome them in. It is the fault of our elites. That's the central problem here. The Chinese are pushing the interest of the Chinese Communist Party. The problem with American elites is they're not protecting our own interests. At educational institutions, they're not even protecting the interests of American students. They're looking out for their own power, prestige, and wealth, toward which the Chinese government contributes so much. One third of all exchange students in the United States come from China. Many of them pay full tuition, which in the United States could be upward of $60,000 per year per student. We're talking then about billions of dollars spread around the country. That's just tuition. It doesn't include gifts. In a sense, Chinese exchange students help float our educational system. It's very important to understand that in authoritarian regimes like China's, the people who get to go to schools, the people who get to leave the country, the people who get top educations tend to be people with ties to the government. They won't just let anyone go. The last thing the Chinese government wants is for students to go abroad and to come back home and disseminate the dangerous ideas they may have learned abroad. Whether this is about democracy, whether this is about human rights, whether this is about press freedoms, whether this is about different movements here in the United States, it's important to understand that for the Chinese, this is a threat to the party. President Xi has been very clear about this. The way he sees it, Western liberalism is the major threat to Chinese Communist Party ideology. Under Xi, the Chinese government is also nationalist. It's a racially chauvinistic government. And this is one of the reasons why the Muslim population in China, the Uyghurs, are persecuted because they're not Han Chinese. So the American idea that all people are created equal, this is not an idea that the Chinese want disseminated. And they certainly don't want students bringing these ideas home to China from America. How do they help ensure that doesn't happen? By sending only the right students from the right families to study in America. Even students who may not be affiliated with Communist Party elites. If we're talking about 340,000 Chinese students who are coming to the United States, they all have families at home. And in every authoritarian regime, there are always pressures put on students and they are constantly reminded that their families are vulnerable. So if the families aren't tied into the regime, they're threatened by the regime. So there is always, by definition, a quid pro quo 
with students from authoritarian regimes like China's, whatever they may gather that may personally benefit them is incidental. What is most important, the reason they are sent is to advance the interest of the Chinese Communist Party. But it's not just Chinese students. It's sometimes American citizens, professors, and researchers who are working for the Chinese government. If you look at the different Department of Justice announcements about recent indictments, recent charges, people have been arrested for stealing research or for lying about their affiliations with Chinese government institutions, in particular the Chinese military, you notice that the Chinese government is clearly very interested in knowing what the Americans are studying, whether it's co-opting our own university officials or sending Chinese citizens to act as spies. The Chinese government has an eye on our universities. In the 1980s, as the tech industry started to boom, private industry wanted cheap labor. The way to get cheap labor was to bring over exchange students, educate them in the United States, and then either keep them in the US at low wages or send them back to their home countries where they could help establish new, cheaper manufacturing bases that would compete with the United States. Either way, they're undercutting US workers. The point was to flood the labor market with cheap foreign labor, drive out Americans who have a higher standard of living. So while we see people complaining all the time, educators, industry complaining, there aren't enough Americans in the STEM fields, there aren't enough American engineers, there aren't enough American tech workers. This was by design. This was a concerted effort between American industry, American universities, and American lawmakers to reduce labor costs for American corporations and generate more revenue for universities. 